So basically, you know, in terms of audience, I'm not going to deep dive in how a resume for a CTO would be because typically those they already have those um, pretty much figured out. Uh, but it's getting different opinions on a resume, especially from hiring. If you have a colleague that you met at a networking event, for them to review your resume, right. that's great insight. And and you are as much as you decide to learn. So yeah, it's 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 really really interesting. Uh, everybody's path is very different, and reinventing your career or switching really uh, path mm -hmm. when you're interested into getting into cybersecurity, but you you don't know how to really compile everything. If you have worked on risk projects and clients, you want those on on your resume. Right. So it's really, you know, it's an interesting uh, path because your resume is your professional DNA. Yeah. So it's it's like, oh, I just want to be like this person. But you you just take what you have in terms of experience and then you just you know tell the story. Um, but it can be daunting. And one of the things that I share, I am not a resume writer, but I know the resumes that get you in the door. Um, and I hired uh, a resume writer in the, in the past for different things. It's right. really, you know, it is really interesting. So how many kids did you bring to Thursdays? So I think, I think last year there were slightly over 100, and I think this year it was just under 100. So they went down a little bit, but, uh, and, and I don't know the breakdown of area schools to know, because some of them, you know, like uh, Davenport West is very, uh, very big on the robotics and computer science, yeah. and so they've got a very strong program within that school, or multiple strong programs. Uh, I don't know which of the other ones do or do not, so. Um. Yes, I think the schools in Iowa, uh, we've got you know, Ames that has a cybersecurity track, uh, Des Moines, uh, DMAC Community College. So that's kind of fresh from maybe a, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So we have really those amazing tracks. Um, I, I think the challenge for employers, they always want to seek outside their company when you may have someone who works in a call center that can detect or is doing a, an issue log. And those are just discipline or a method of thinking that you need to parlay and your biggest asset are going to come from inside the door too. So for someone who's tr who is working for a healthcare company or or um, a uh, mortgage company, it's really fine tuning again so that you can switch career path, you can grow your income and everything. Right. Still have a couple minutes, so I'm just going to sit right here. Yeah. Gosh, my hands are frozen, but I'm drinking very cold water, so. <laughs> it's cold in here. Yes. Yeah, last year I was a little cold, so I brought my jacket. I, I didn't bring a blanket or like a fur. Uh, it's not quite there. What an amazing weather. I mean, it's just been really just amazing. So how long have you been CEO? Uh, actually, since last year. So I incorporated uh, my company last year on November 11th. Um, wow. on Veterans Day. So it's really interesting on how this is linked, and I'll share that in my presentation, to CornCon. Uh, CornCon of last year was a pivotal moment for my career. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's really interesting, you never know, and that's why it's really important to be out there in the community. Um, your network is really part of your capital, um, and those insights, uh, you know, they're going to encourage you to push yourself. Um, yeah, it's really, really neat. I mean, I've been so impressed by the presenters, and I'm so glad that you got your own presentation yeah, on yeah. Friday. So, do you think you you'll present next year too? Or? Uh, if they need somebody from our yeah from the bureau, probably um, just because I'm nearby. We have people down south that do it too. But they just have to travel quite ways out. I don't know if we have. Um, someone presenting at Secure Iowa um, Where's that at? Is Tuesday, that? October 8th in Des Moines. I think Jeff is going there, or because I know one of our guys is going to an event over that way is in Des Moines. It, sound, it might be uh, that event, but he's present, there's two, uh, I believe there's two cyber guys kind of presenting together, okay. is my understanding. Yeah. Well, that's another great conference. I mean, they have just pretty amazing speakers, and it's I think it's a, yeah, it's a free conference. There's a track where you have to pay, but it just draws the masses, and it's 
So he said he's doing the free part. Yeah. Um, if, it, if it's what I think it is, then the guy I was talking to was also in our office at the cyber. He was saying that he's doing the free part. Yeah. yeah. The free track or whatever. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I joined SecD, I started literally uh, last year, our security user group, and then that's how I got to hear about PornCon and just like um, one thing to another. And driving from uh, Des Moines is just so easy. Mm -hmm. uh, it just doesn't take uh, too much. I mean, three yeah, hours is nothing. Yeah. I always stop in Iowa City, so I can't really complain. Not much to look at. A lot of corn. I see the thing is I really like corn, so um, <laughs> I love looking at the farm, like where the the sky meets um, the field, and I love seeing those little you know, squares of farms, like those those bright red. I, for me, it's it's a really people do yoga. I don't driving puts me in a peaceful state, but you know, well, I can't I do that. More like that. I hate driving. Really, I just despise it. Did you have to drive far from to get here? No, no, I live right around here, just period. I just, it, anymore, it's, you know, I used to love, like, driving. I was like that. I mean, I would just drive for hours with, with just no no problems. But, you know, anymore, it's just there's so many distracted drivers out there not paying attention to what's going on. And I, I tend to find them. I don't know if I'm a magnet or what it is. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, me and driving don't get along anymore. Yeah, no, that, uh... I, I don't know if I had to drive uh, for a living. Some people do quite a bit in their sales jobs. I don't know how I would feel after a while. But so it's almost three. I'm just going to give it maybe two more minutes, just to be to, to be fair, so I don't skip anybody. So are you guys going to uh, the party? After this, heck yeah, yep. it's, it's really fun. For a to justify the drinking afterwards, Yay. the event the day. Yeah. So I wonder how far it is from here. Like you have to go over the river. Yeah, it's, oh, it's yeah. on the other side of the river. It's only like ten or fifteen minutes. So it's it's really not. Are they do the one or they do yeah, the Moline one? Okay. Yeah, I wonder. How, how did they decide the one in Moline was just the one? That the one in Moline is quite a bit bigger. It's a lot bigger. They just did Davenport last year, right? No, or where the actor. No, they did the. Um, it was like an escape room experience. Oh, that's right. Oh, wow. That's right. Yeah, the uh, this is Rock Island. Okay. And the escape room are yeah. really fun. Yeah. It's really cool. Did you guys make it make it out in terms of solving in time? It? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but but we did have like a like a twelve year old or a six year old with us. That was at the right height to find clues, that because we're all tall, mm -hmm. and so it was nice having a short person looking for clues too, because we would never found those clues. We're not that height to look <laughs> yeah. everywhere. It tells who it's designed for, right? Right, right. Uh, there's, a, there's two in Des Moines, and those are pretty uh, popular for companies to use it as team building. Although some people <laughs> don't really leverage that as a team building. Yeah, I can see where that one could go horribly wrong. Horribly wrong, and you're like very happy you're not all stranded on an island because that would not um, go super well. All right. Well, I think I'll just get started and let's see uh, who trickles in. Well, thank you so much. You guys made it. It's the end of the day. Yay! I'm keeping you from drinking in about like 45 minutes, an hour and 10 minutes, right? Okay, so um, today I'm just going to go over some very, very basic lessons uh, that I got from recruiting. Um, share a little bit about my background so you can understand my itinerary in, in some ways. Uh, to the IT world, and then I'll go over some of the resumes um, and how to apply those to you. So it's really, really basic for today. Uh, first, I really want to say uh, thank you for everyone who's volunteered, um, also for the board um, and for all the vendors. I mean, I'm, I'm really, these events, it's so wonderful when uh, people uh, help and come together. Um, I also want to thank uh, my investor, and uh, if you were at CornCon uh, last year, uh, Dr. Richard H. L. Marshall, who is considered the first legal architect um, for uh, the first cyber warfare 
uh, in the U.S. scenario uh, is actually a private and invested uh, in Whitfield. Um, and that's really because of him, I'm here. So I think, you know, thank you for everyone for being encouraging. Um, and one of the quotes that I really like is, the secret to having it all is knowing you already do. So gratefulness and, and uh, thank you go a long way. So before becoming the CEO of Wheatfield Partners, because we get to that point in our career where we have an official big title, um, you know, that was just me. That was, uh, if you had asked me at that age what I wanted to be, I wanted to uh, drive <coughs> a tractor and be outside all the time. I also wanted to be a doctor and I wanted to be a war reporter really, really uh, drastic. So a little bit about my background. Uh, I grew up on a farm in France, very rural. Um, it was a hamlet. Uh, to get milk, you had to drive like literally 15 minutes away. <laughs> there was a pond and um, I, my, my farm was surrounded um, by wheat fields and corn. And so a uh, really rural, uh, rural uh, lifestyle. Um, I moved to the U.S. Uh, in uh, basically, oh gosh, I was 16. I graduated from high school in St. Louis, Missouri, Nerings Hall. Um, and then I got a scholarship uh, to Drake University. And that's what brought me to Des Moines. And, you know, the key to go back again about agriculture and Iowa uh, cornfields, <laughs> corn is really a good symbol but to me, is when I had a scholarship at DePaul in Indiana, um, I think McAllister and another one, uh, but driving from St. Louis, Missouri to uh, Des Moines, Iowa, I saw those rows of corns and I'm like, you know, this feels like back home. This could be home. Um, you know, the tipping point from, you know, being in school uh, at Drake University is, was really when I got contacted by a recruiter and Colleen Moline, you probably have heard of Elliott Aviation, a uh, small uh, company, they needed to purchase a couple planes, small planes, and they were looking for someone who spoke French in Des Moines in the 90s. And they found me, so it was like, oh, I'm going to have to dress up for this assignment, and I didn't have a car, so the recruiter had to pick me up from Drake, and, and here I am with the big shots, and little planes are taking off. Um, a little bit more about my background, uh, consulting engagement. So from one little gig, translating airplane logs, uh, I got to do more recruiting, uh, not recruiting, consulting engagements. Uh, so I would, would be pulled in to uh, just fill in for someone who was uh, you know, on a uh, um, maternity leave or uh, someone who had just quit. So I would be required to jump in in different environments. And, for me, compared to all my friends who were like, oh, don't you want something stable, a stable job? I was like, no, I want to learn. So I got to work for Tones Brothers. How many of you have heard of Tones Brothers in Ankeny? Okay, manufacturing uh, spices. If you've heard of uh, Spice Islands or Durkee or French, uh, they were acquired by ACH Foods, and I worked there um, with the marketing department and the manufacturing plant while they were being acquired. So you learn about different softwares, you, you get exposed to different projects and people, and you are building your network. So I've done consulting agent, uh, engagements, I've, I've worked as a permanent employee in about 15 years of experience. And what I have learned is really to craft your resume, to attract um, really the right opportunities and projects. So your resume, it, it's essential that you write down all the details of the experience. Clearly you're going to have projects that are confidential, you won't be able to list that. But you can list the breadth of impact of your work. And that's how you're going to be measured in the interview, but also through the pre screen. Um, another key that I found in during uh, consulting engagements, uh, volunteer. Volunteering can give you a great opportunity to get into a startup, or uh, maybe a nonprofit organization and make a contribution where you can decide what you're going to work on. Um, it's great experience. It's also great because when you're going to get interviewed uh, for a job and they ask you, well, what are you doing right now? Well, I'm volunteering on this project and this is what my day to day looks like and I love helping people. So you need to, you know, grow your resume, grow your experience in different uh, venture, but volunteer 
when you're unemployed uh, or in transition is really uh, important. Build a network, your references, uh, to back up your professionalism and expertise. So being able to have a reference to a volunteer project about how you handle a critical uh, project validates for the references and the interview. So you can say, well, this person can really attest of uh, my uh, experience. So it's really an unlikely path uh, that led me today. 2018, uh, Corntown here was a complete um, change of my life, actually. Uh, to give you a little bit of uh, background, in 2013, <coughs> I was sourced by a company um, in Des Moines called Midwest Project Partners, and they were a boutique consulting firm. Um, they had consultants, uh, 15 plus years of experience, tenure of the consultants, eight years, very, very seasoned professional, and I was a uh, professional, and I was hired to be basically be the recruiting manager for uh, mid-level uh, IT roles, but also there were C-levels as well. And it was not just one pipeline, not just project managers. It could be a CTO, it could be a business analyst, a QA tester. So what I had to do from scratch, because I was really getting to be the, the IT arm uh, of the company and, and help funnel those candidates, I had to build my network. And building, again, the word network. Building your network, you have to attend uh, those user groups. Um, and gain the trust. I mean, people are not going to just give you their resume and personal information without knowing that you're going to take care of them. Uh, so I'm working for this consulting uh, company and I'm just really loving it. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to retire from there. And uh, my boss, who was the VP of Tech Midwest Technical Partners, the ITR, um, was also thinking, you know, we're all going to retire from this company. But the partners had to uh, retire and they ended up selling the company. And so uh, in 2016, I have to say, I was, uh, I, I, I transitioned into a new role and I just was not quite feeling it. And I, I did something that I would definitely advise no one to do, is I actually quit um, the role that I was in and I, I didn't have a specific backup plan at the, at the time. Um, I did a 360 in, in uh, my career. I actually worked in uh, the, the uh, direct sales, uh, fashion jewelry, completely different. And then last year in July, I got offered a job to go uh, into IT recruiting again. I was like, great, I'm going to do serious stuff again. Like corporate, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and I turned in uh, SEC DSM, our IT user group uh, in Des Moines. And then I heard about CornCon and came to CornCon. And literally, um, three months later, about a week after I had attended CornCon, I was let go, lost my job. Um, and my, um, suddenly my world was, it was very, very hard. Um, and I, I, I was really struggling uh, at that time. And I was thinking, what am I going to do? OK, well, go back to your network. Uh, your user group, be out there because you need to be around people that are working on projects. So I really got involved again with uh, SEC DSM and I actually invited one of um, our speakers, uh, Richard Marshall, to speak at SEC DSM. And uh, basically uh, he said to me, you know, Perry, you've got a great network. Why don't you uh, build your own company? And you have to believe in yourself. Some people can see like the, 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 the they can see a, a bright future in you, but you have to see it in yourself. And he said, you know, Perry, if you believe in yourself as much as I do, I will invest in, in getting you started. And so that's what happened. Uh, last year, uh, November 11, 2018, uh, I was incorporated. And uh, this year, um, I'm launching my company. So that gives you a little breath. Woo! <laughs> yes, exactly. So really, that reinvention, I get it. Those, uh, those, those uh, growing pain, I get it. All right. So every day you reinvent yourself. You're always in motion, but you decide every day, forward or backward. Um, each of us has the unique ability to bounce back and create the future we desire. We just need to master our stories and project experience and share it accurately. 
Your resume is just like you, constantly evolving. The best way to get the right resume is to seek feedback from your network, school, mentors, peers. Resume writing is a skill, but no, you can always hire someone. So the range is, at least in Des Moines, 150 to 350, but it's really valuable um, to, you know, if you can do plumbing in your house on your own, but sometimes outsourcing it can be a really good choice too. <laughs> you are in control of your destiny, choose the right words. So today's schedule, we're going to assess where you are and where you want to be, um, four scenarios to choose from. We're going to do a basic overview of uh, resume structures, whether it's entry level, mid level, or executive. Um, and really getting the right resume st structure is going to give you the salary, the compensation that your experience command. Um, I meet a lot of candidates, and for uh, new opportunities, they're like, you know, but I don't have to get that much money, I could get a little more. Uh -uh. You always want to grow because if you're taking on more responsibilities, you should be paid accordingly. And employers understand that. So I won't get today into negotiation, but that's a cri critical factor. So let's do this. So assess where you are and where you want to be. So scenario, you're currently employed, but you're looking for a more challenging role. Currently employed, but need to move into a new environment, which is very different. <coughs> if you have a sense of urgency, maybe you're at a spot where the culture is not a fit. Uh, not employed, but looking to get hired as soon as possible. Uh, currently a student, but looking to get a part-time job or an internship. Okay, currently employed, but looking for a more challenging role. So really, one of the things that I always encourage, it, some people work on their resume, but they may not have a specific job. I just need a job. Um, you have to look at the uh, exact description of your current job. So what I would say, in your current job, Go on Indeed or uh, ZipRecruiter or on LinkedIn and look at jobs out there that are similar to what you're currently doing. Because maybe you won't recall that you're doing this day to day, but that template is also something that you can use for bullet points. So really, there are resources out there. Uh, because sometimes it's like, oh, well, I know what I can do, but I don't know how to phrase it. So um, also, a critical factor is if you are a backup for your manager, make sure you list that. Uh, because it shows you have additional trust and responsibilities within your team environment or your business unit. People overlook that statement, but that could mean, that could affect your compensation and how you're looked upon during the interview. So you're trusted to take on uh, the work if your boss is uh, not, not, uh, not available. Uh, the next step, really compile the details of the projects you've worked on. This is a crucial element. It's amazing because, again, we sometimes we don't list everything that we've worked on, but um, the projects and the details and the impact is really, really important. So include purpose of the project, the audience, the impact, the budget, especially if you manage it, uh, how many consultants or FTAs full-time employees were allocated. So it kind of shows really, you know, is this under 1 million, is it above 10 million? Um, by looking over the job description, make, your, make sure your resume uh, include project proof that you have already accomplished what they are looking for. So in the JD, um, the job description, so that for the job that you're applying, when you look at the responsibilities of that job, make sure um, that you highlight and you're like, okay, I've done this, I've done this, and then you can write uh, your experience next to it. So for me, I mean, I craft the resume, uh, based, again, on the job experience. So, and then those will uh, be great example for you to prepare for your phone screen uh, interview uh, or your in-person interview. Scenario B, you're currently employed but need to move into a new environment. I have been there, I hear you. Sometimes we find ourselves in the wrong culture, lateral move, moving into a similar role with same, same responsibilities. So the next steps I would say is look at your non-compete if you have one. Uh, because an easier way to apply for a different job, um, di different job in a uh, in a competitor. So, for example, if, if you work in, um, I'm not going to list any, but you want to look at the competitors of that uh, company because they will know exactly, and you you can say I've had eight years of experience in within that industry and. Companies really look if you have industry experience to when they look at multiple candidates. So if someone has a healthcare background, but someone has the same qualification but came from 
ma manufacturing, that's, they're less likely to be looked upon by a recruiter. Again, compile the details of the project. Uh, I went over that, look at the job description, make sure to uh, include the project proof. C, not employed looking to get hired as soon as possible. Um, so I don't know how many of you in this room that, that applies to, but if you've been out of the market um, uh, for a year or more and had to, to leave for personal reason, um, really trying to get back into a corporate job, uh, trying to get a new job, I would look at the, the job that you had maybe a year prior and look at similar jobs that are out there. Um, if you try to do something that's a completely different opportunity, um, it's going to be very hard to uh, get in the door. And sometimes, you know, consulting also can be the fastest way to get um, back into the field. So even though, for example, there, if you're looking for part, uh, if you're looking for a full-time role and you haven't been employed for a while, maybe uh, a consulting role that may not be a high pay rate can get you into the door in the right employer. So when you've been out of the bench, uh, on the bench, you're competing with still other people, but in the consulting role, you get back into the game. The other alternative, <laughs> that's last of the customer service or call center, again, get into the, the door. Um, currently a student, when looking to get a part-time or an internship, you're enrolled in school, you have education but needs hands-on experience, um, again, list your current and past project uh, with a lot of details. If you're entry, uh, I'm sorry, uh, make sure to list all the technical skills. So all the softwares, all the systems that you're using at school, make sure to list them. Uh, have references, so when you're volunteer or working on, on uh, other projects, get involved in IT user group, build your own community, attend conferences and events, volunteer, volunteer, build relationships to land your next job. So, we're going to go over three basic resume structure. Entry level, mid-level, exactly not so much because when you get at that level, you probably don't need me. <laughs> not exactly for a resume. So, before we look at this three type, um, you need to know which, which role you are currently in and where you, you're trying to be. Have the list of job description in front of you before you start writing it. So, Basically, again, print out those jobs that you're looking at and just really look at the distinction and even the wording so that you can replicate it or mirror it in your resume. So when the employer is looking at it, it's like, okay, I can see. And the other thing that I would say um, that I know, you know, the role that you're applying for or where you are can be very different if you decide to go into startups. Startups are a great way to uh, expand your skills um, and grow into a new role. So that's, that's really something that I would uh, encourage if you're interested in those. So entry level, I mean, this, these are just basic descriptions. I'll just let you uh, read them, but these are the descriptions, uh, you know, three years um, of experience, more uh, entry level. Mid-career, that can be really, really different, but it's above entry level. But some people can have, you know, five to eight years in that. Um, and then senior executive, that can be several years, 10 plus years, 15 years. It's really the level of responsibilities that you take on. Okay, basic tip resume. So spelling, the spelling, clearly every uh, recruiter would tell you that, be accurate. Simplicity uh, is key clarity. So one thing um, when it comes to font, uh, the reason you want a very simple font is when your resume gets scanned and you're submitting it uh, on the company website or even providing it to a res to a to a rec recruiter. Sometimes with certain fonts, it will modify them and then it will create symbols and then it's just not going to look uh, quite right. So I would say. Make sure your font is uh, easy to read. Accuracy, so clearly don't forget your certifications, you've paid for them. Uh, list metrics, so really in terms of impact, what you've been able to see the, the company, um, or your efforts, uh, impact in dollars. The standard, you know, I've gotten back and forth. In consulting, it's going to be a lot more, but um, two-page resume would be kind of the standard that I see. 
Uh, clearly, it, you know, don't use a font that's like size 40. <laughs> uh, resume must have, you know, clearly basic first name, last name, phone number, email, professional email that is. So big joke at Hotmail is not going to work when you're, uh, you know, submitting your resume. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Create a new email. And then your LinkedIn profile link. That's really important to have. Um, everyone is looking on LinkedIn and recruiters uh, are going to just click on it immediately. So being able to, in, in cybersecurity, clearly there are some details on LinkedIn that you probably want to avoid having out there. But LinkedIn profile, every recruiter is going to look at that and prospect us. Um, resume needs to be tailored to the job you're applying for. I got, I got a good print job description. But you know, sometimes I would apply for different really types of uh, jobs. And so for full-time job or consulting role, I'm going to dive a lot more in the projects for consulting role and the industry and, and the immersion that I have. Um, so that will be here. So Perry, yeah. I have a question sure. about number two. Mm -hmm. So one of the one of the confusing things that I have noticed for people is about people's resumes mm -hmm. is that they think they have to put every job on the resume. So they do a chronological resume rather than a, a resume focused on the particular job. So from the recruiter perspective, right, I know you're stating to me, which, which is obvious, tailor your resume to the job, yeah. but how does someone go about doing that? when they really don't understand how. Yeah. Um, you know, I think defining where you want to be and where you want to go, that's why I always say, have the person not just view it online and have one screen and write work on their resume, but print where you are and where you want to be. So really you can see the level and the differences in responsibilities. Those levels are critical clearly for um, for your compensation. Am I answering the question? You, okay. you are, because, and, and I'm really searching for if I'm right in how I coach people. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I do say is to tailor the job. Yeah. Right? Tailor your resume to the job. It doesn't mean make stuff up. No. But you, you tailor it either to your job, to the job and your experience, or to the job and education if you don't have any yeah. experience, but you do have the education. And I just want to make sure if, if that was right. Yeah, it's, it's really, I mean, it's interesting because people find the, the uh, and I do too, writing your own resume, like it's almost maddening, like, oh my gosh, so that thing, and I have to submit this right away. Because it's that apprehension of, like, do I recall everything that I've done? But by looking at other job, for example, I'm just going to take something super basic like call center. But like I've worked in a call center and I was updating my resume a couple years ago, about 10 years ago, and I couldn't recall the day to day. There were some other systems that I was using, and I looked at a, um, a another employer that had exactly the same role that I had been in. So I was able to use some of the bullets that were out there because I was refreshing my memory of, okay, you know, I do a lot more than I would think, but the information to build your resume is out there. Clearly don't copy and paste like you're the CIO of a company if you're not, and with all the fake responsibilities. So, um, but yes, I mean, you're absolutely um, right, Angela, in that domain. Um, I got a question. Sure. That goes on with her. Should a, if we're applying for a technical job, uh, IT, and um, we have, um, past work history that's not IT, mm -hmm. should we include that? The, no, only, time I would, IT the only time I would include it uh, would be if it's similar industry. Okay. Um, because similar industry, for example, uh, if you worked, uh, maybe you didn't have a, maybe it was not an IT related job, but you were working in healthcare and you're applying at Walmart. Mm -hmm. I would definitely list that you have experience working within healthcare because you may have had access to uh, maybe compliance documents that were related to healthcare that would parlay to someone. It's also uh, kind of a okay. keyword. Um, it's amazing because 
Just little things like that will differentiate with someone that has zero healthcare. If you've worked in a call center for five years uh, for Walmart or for a, an insurance company, even though it's not you know, a desk or a pen tester or anything like that, having that is going to give you an edge. It's going to be a passport in your stand. So definitely, if the job is within the same industry, even if it's not you know, IT. Uh, clearly, you know, including the keywords. So if you're applying for a job and you're not leveraging the keywords of the job description, you're going to be passed over. I mean, that's just, uh, that's just the way it is. Chronology, you, uh, proper tense accordingly. So everything that you have achieved should be in the past and then everything that you're doing right now should be current. Skip pictures, no art. Um, <laughs> I've had situations where I get a resume and it's just very creative, but I'm not, we're not working on a, <laughs> a creative um, project there. And so, so, you know, do not include your picture, personal picture ever. Uh, the only picture that you, you get, could have um, is on your LinkedIn, but never on your resume. And no art, no little flowers or anything. And I've seen that within the IT world, and it's just, you're going to be skipped over. Um, all right, so let's take a look at an entry-level resume. So basically, you're going to have a summary of uh, qualification. You're going to list the number of years that you have within that role. If you have worked on other uh, projects too, I would add that as well. So just, it has to reflect your story. Like I said, uh, the resume is your professional DNA. Uh, also the level of proficiency in programs, operating system, and you want in IT, definitely problem solver um, and technical communication. The, the challenge that I've had, there's, there's um, in terms of resume not addressing communication and relatability with other teams is if you have to work with the business side and you're just not able to communicate, you're not going to be uh, able to get in the door. So really, one of the bullets in a summary should be communication. Communication, um, building a trust uh, across business lines or, or teams, that's really important. And for a level resume, clearly education is going to be the most recent. Uh, qualification, uh, programming languages, software apps, database management, operating systems, uh, and then clearly professional experience. Conferences and volunteer activities, those are very important too. Um, this is a little bit different. Uh, I put this, I found that on Sense, but it shows titles and years of experience, and then kind of from the range of years. So I don't know if you can see, but from zero to three years, four to six, seven to 10, 11 to 15, and 20 plus. Um, Mid-level. So mid-level is going to be a little bit different. You're really, in terms of having a brief uh, paragraph about your skills and breadth of experience, it's really like a mini, I would say a mini bio. It's really going to compile the breadth of knowledge. You can find um, templates and samples really pretty much on the web. Um, but this, this really, the official title uh, of where you want to be and the experience in the field that um, brief summary, then what I do see is really the areas of expertise. So you're going to have, I see um, most of them for mid-level having nine different areas. It can grow even higher. Uh, technical proficiencies, the platform, networking, languages and tools, um, and then professional experience, community involvement and education. So again, yeah, really, really, uh, really basic. And today I'm not doing a huge five-hour deep dive, but that's um, that's one of them. And then for executive resume, um, I'm just showing a little bit of a snapshot that really the credentials are going to be at the top. Not saying that if you don't have credentials in the mid-level that you wouldn't put it, but put all your certification right after your, um, your first name. That is going to stand up. So when I see a lot of um, the CISOs, I'm going to see just a series of all their certification. That's going to be the get-go. Um, executive summary, that's going to be a little bit longer, uh, core competencies, industries. So now for this level for executive, you're going to have a lot more projects within a variety of industries. Um, 
at least that's what I'm observing. Um, also, selected achievements, not that you can't, you can do that in mid-level as well, but selected achievements, multiple bullet points, they're going to show really the financial and the business impact. Um, so those details, again, are going to be uh, important. Affiliations, because at that level, you're probably a member of different <coughs> groups, you're attending very formal conferences. I mean, those are going to stand out. Um, at that level, it's, it's going to be a stamp everywhere. Um, most of the people will have the similar uh, affiliation. Uh, and the education is at the end of the resume. So it's really interesting that um, truly, even if you have multiple <laughs> education tracks, um, educa in executive resume, the education is going to be really the last, um, last area um, because of all the project experience and the exposure that you've had. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Regarding credentials, so you're putting your if you put your name at the top and then like shortly thereafter, you know, the credentials and you're putting down like CISSP, everyone's familiar with that, right? Yep. What about your more like, if there's like an arcane certification, something, I mean, does does the reviewer, this person like you or who's selecting, do you like waste the time like looking up like what is this? Like SANS has some that you I might would be familiar absolutely. with, but you might not know what they're for. Absolutely, because that is typically, I mean, as a recruiter, I would always look at that, uh, but the you think about the hiring manager. The, it's where you are and your, the language that, that you're in, the hiring manager is going to see that and absolutely be spot on. So never shy away from certifications. You've paid for them, you've invested uh, in them, and they will stand out against any of the um, competitors or other people who are, um, who are um, submitting their resume. Oh, so, Again, I think I've gone really fast. <laughs> I have a lot more, but you know, so my how you, So how do you, when you're, when you're talking about certifications, right, how do you note if you help write the cert? I would say I would include that in the mini executive summary or above. Okay. I would absolutely um, author and contribute to, to um, you know, and how many people are getting certified now. I mean, that, that, that would be really critical to have. That would be a great story um, to tell. Can validate. So I know I've kind of zoomed through it. I, any other questions? Sure. Do you have any tips on online interviews? Online interviews, so when you Any mean, feedback from hiring managers, um, like what they like and what they don't like, or anything? Um, when you say, I just wanted to make sure that like I Like a web conference, <coughs> like your video, oh, your video, yeah, yes. like on Skype I'm or... Yeah, I'm seeing that uh, a, a lot more, clearly being professional and having the best like setup uh, because any techni te technology <coughs> issues is going to yeah. be the doom of you okay. uh, during those interviews, being super prepared. The key would be, well, to, if you're going to go to a recruiter with that, they'll know exactly the setup. Um, and you can rehearse. Uh, you can, I would definitely practice as many times as you can with your recruiter. Um, the recruiter also may have um, had other candidates that they're submitting for this role and may have uh, insight for you. So for example, um, when, one key question to ask a recruiter is how many candidates you're submitting for this role. And again, I'm using just the recruiter uh, role for that because then if one uh, candidate is interviewing first, you'll get more insight on how to better interview as the second person. If you can find out where you're interviewing for that role. What other questions are good to ask recruiters before you jump into an interview? Like what other insight or insider knowledge can you get without crossing oh. any boundaries? Oh, uh, uh, so you want really a wide breath on... Uh, yeah, maybe just a couple... For, yeah, first tip I would say um, when you you be um, very so there's a lot of recruiters out there, um, but understanding the culture of where the recruiter is working in terms of firm, typically people know who are the good firms and the bad firms. Um, when you meet that recruiter, is that person really how long have they been in in the job themselves? Um, you know, do they have a direct relationship with the hiring leader? Um, that's really important because then you'll get really uh, good insight about the role. There are three ways I would say that I get roles. One is going to be 
um, through direct relationships. So I know the hiring leaders, so I know the format, I know uh, his or her personality, I know the team. So I can give you some insights that no one else can give you because I have a trusted relationship. So it's just for you to connect and really, they already trust me in placing the right person in their environment. Um, the second one is going to be where I'm a vendor and I just get the job description, but I don't get to ask any questions. I always have to look through HR and I'm in a standstill. I'm not quite sure how many candidates have applied. So the field is a little bit different. The third way to place is really my favorite. And I think in the startup community, that's a, a, a little uh, bit easier is maybe there's not a formal job description, but my role is to break it, brokerage the relationship and the introduction. So I set you up with coffee with the uh, CEO of the company. And you have coffee and you share your interests and your experience, and then a job is created. It sounds crazy, it's extremely rare due to the pipeline and the time, but that's why I always say, you know, startups can be a really great opportunity for you to develop your skills. Um, but those are, I would say, really critical. If you come from the consulting uh, world and you're looking to stay in consulting, always give a range to the recruiter. Never say a straight figure. The range is crucial um, because there can be a variance of budget for the hourly rate. Um, the, most people who just gave a straight figure are going to be paid less. Uh, so by giving a range to the recruiter, you say this is the minimum that I accept. Hey, if I can get at this sweet spot, you're more likely to secure me. Um, and that's the same for salary and compens compensation. So one of the other tips I would say when you're working with a recruiter uh, and they're like, what's your salary? Um, they should ask, you know, what's your current compensation and salary, but where do you want to be? You should be kept whole when you're transitioning to a new job. I've seen situations where the recruiter did not inform uh, the candidate and that person actually took a pay cut. And so, you know, again, the, the, the <coughs> importance is really also understanding the benefits when you're transitioning from one company to another. Again, being kept whole. Are you going to leave a bonus at the end of the year? Um, those are really important. So for salary and hourly, do your research. There's a couple of things that I would go on. Payscale is a really good website. I would say check it out. Um, really great way to find uh, for salaries. Don't trust LinkedIn to give you a salary range. Um, typically, it's not accurate. Um, you'll see also on SANS um, some information. So all the uh, salary um, in InfoSec, you can find that information. But be very educated about your value in the market. Right now, your skills are so needed. This is a great time for you to command the, the hourly or the salary that you want. Um, so salary is going to be your base salary and compensation is all the add on. So one of the things when I negotiate um, a, like, a, even though that was not a personal placement under a weak field, I need, help negotiate um, a salary increase by $5,000 um, last week. And it's really important companies uh, do expect to be negotiated with. So, you know, typically what I would say for a salary when you're applying for a new job, uh, between five to 7,000 is not unreasonable. Is new, uh, is unreason unreasonable to uh, ask for. If you've got some certification, that's going to tap on. So really researching um, your value in the market is crucial, um, and it will determine your resume. What's a good way to start that conversation? So you get offered an amount, and you ask for more because you're disagreeable, which is a good thing to do, um, or a good thing to be. Um, so how do you start that conversation? When you've already been offered a yes. job? Um, I would say, and I can send you a, a timeline of what I wrote uh, to help with that negotiation, but I recollected, so I looked at the job description again, um, and I recollected the specific uh, industry that I spent time in and specific projects that are going to impact immediately the company. And then explain um, in very cordial way that my value in the market, this is where I felt, I feel like I've earned um, to be at this. Uh, so there are ways to craft it in a very, very uh, cordial way. And typically that's not turned down. Um, the other thing when you do a negotiation, again, that's not really um, uh, resume writing, but you can negotiate fully PTO. A lot of people forget that. 
Um, you can negotiate uh, sometimes sign on bonus too. Um, so if you're leaving something on in the company, if you're going to transition and you're going to leave a bonus uh, to be kept whole, make sure that you negotiate that part. Um, also, I would say typically, uh, but look also at your expenditures in terms of where you want to invest for your education conferences. Make sure you list, list those because again, um, when you enter in that negotiation phase, having all those different areas, you may not get everything, but you cannot get what you don't ask for. So those are really, really important. Um, Can you ask for their pay range? I know you said that, that you should do a pay range, but can we ask for their pay range? Uh, typically, uh, I would say you can ask. Some, yeah. some of the recruiters might be internal no, recruiters in the company. No, no. <laughs> may, no, no. May, may I not. I'd be firm just to not give my pay range yes. until I could hear what their pay range is. Yeah, I would say in a situation like that, well, you know, I, by putting the range, typically if you look at if you do your research for other, and there's a lot of different sources, you can find what would be accurate in the market. Um, you know, and also, some of the network that you have at events like Honkan of prospect hiring managers may be able to confirm to you what they see in the market for that type of role. So that's why you know, networking and friendship is great, but it's a resources on professional uh, growth right here because someone right here that you're sitting next to you can tell you oh, how to find that range. So having, you know, depending, uh, but and really again, the field that you're in, the dollars are flowing um, rapidly. Any other questions? Was that no, helpful? That's good. That's good. Yeah. So when you meet the recruiter, I reassert, and they ask you, you know, what, uh, you know, what's your Current uh, hourly rate said, you know, you know, actually right now where I would feel comfortable would be between this rate and this rate. Um, if you have your own company, you'll be called a 1099, so that's going to you'll have the burden of the taxes, so that's going to be a little higher by right, five eight dollars. Um, okay, any other questions? So that was the end, a little bonus about why uh, the name Wheatfield Partners. Um, so this is my farm. This is where I grew up on. So you can see the wheat. I don't think this is, uh, <laughs> I don't think this is corn. I think corn was over here. Um, uh, symbolism for wheat for me is really it can be turned into bread and bread is prosperity to the table and sharing the wealth. Uh, partners is because really uh, it's being equal at the table, clients and candidates employers and just building uh, relationships and then I'm, I'm giving you a little sneak preview you're the first people to see it my website will be launched uh, in the coming weeks and this is a little overview so yes. so yeah well thank you so much uh, to all and then this is my contact information if you don't have my business card I can give that to you Yeah. Did any you got that? Yeah, I got the next.